Welcome to the channel guys. Uh, today we have one seriously cool review for you today. Uh, I'll try to put out two videos today. One will be on the bipod, one will be on the uh, SIG MCX Rattler, so stick around. Uh, it'll either come out today or tomorrow. But what we're really here to talk about is this Knight's Armament bipod here. Uh, it has a lot of similarities to the Atlas within having the gear, kind of gear and teeth system for your bipod movement. It has six positions of movement for you. Let me get in there for you. There you go. So you'll have your all the way back, uh, 45 down, of course, 90 degrees. And then you have two extra notches you could see here. So you can get a 45, like, and then kind of in between the middle of those. And then with your last going all the way forward. Uh, excellent excellent bipod this thing is lightweight yet very sturdy i'm not really sure how they managed to do that but they definitely accomplished that mission uh you have a pan option on here uh, i'll try to get the exact degrees of pan that you can get out of it for you later and uh what this tab does here is it'll lock you in if you need to uh say you're panning on this way or you're on some kind of awkward angle uh, pull this tab and it'll lock you into whatever pan angle you're at. Uh, very simple, very easy to use. Easy to use on the fly if you're more worried about uh, target ac acquisition and you really don't have time to uh, mess with any buttons or levers. It's very intuitive. Uh, it has an off and an on written on it, so if you forget which one's which, it's kind of hard to show in this light. Apologize about the lighting. But, uh, very easy to use, like as I said, and uh, very smooth. It pans around that pivot point there. You can kind of see how the locking button works there. Uh, when you go to mount it to your Picatinny, your 1913, you'll push this button in, and as you can see, it releases that lever. So you can't actually clamp it on. Uh, what you're going to want to do is, since it's going to be more forward on the pick rail anyway, this isn't a big deal, but you're going to have to slide the pick rail into it instead of uh, clamping around the outside, which makes it very sturdy. And like I said, it's not a big deal because it's going to be on at the towards the end of your pick rail anyway. So just push that in. Once you get into a spot, it'll lock in easy. Uh, it has your also has your cant adjustment. Uh, right now I have it locked in. To uh, pull this lever here, what you're going to want to do is pull out on it a little bit, and that'll let you release that lever. That way you can stow it and get it out of the way when you don't need to. Uh, much like a Harris uh, adjustment knob, you can pull out on it, and then this isn't making any adjustments yet, but it's uh, letting you position so you can tighten or loosen. So say your rifle's in the way here, and you need to uh, tighten it even more, what you'll do is pull out on that, give yourself more adjustment range, and then you can go ahead and tighten down on it. But since this is already tight, we're gonna loosen it. Oh, I'm sorry, loosen it this way. And uh, that'll give you your can adjustment. Very smooth, and then when you hit your can't level that you need, say you're on the side of a hill that's angled, and then you can go ahead and tighten her down to wherever you need it. If you need, again, if you need more adjustment, more turning than that, your rifle doesn't allow it, go ahead and pull out. And then lock it back in and you can tighten it or loosen it any way that you like. I don't have much bullet time on this bipod yet, but I will be here. Uh, it's coming down. It's snowing pretty. It's about minus five degrees outside right now, but I'm still going to go shoot a video in this. Uh, That's going to be a good, good way to test this bipod. Good, bad weather situation. Uh, along with the bipod, this rifle is also going to get tested in it. But, uh, yeah, one hell of a bipod. Lightweight. This weighs about 13 and a half ounces. Uh, it's about a full two, three ounces lighter than a Harris bipod. I'll go ahead and put it on the digital scale to show you guys uh, myself. All right, your leg adjustments here. Nice and slim. Doesn't pretty snag free there, but it's easy, so easy to do. It just glides up and down. Uh, you get five position adjustments there. It does come with rubber feet now on this. This is a second generation. There is a first generation that came with a round uh, spike feet. And it also had a drag adjustment knob up here, which they say is not necessary. It would have went here. And what that would do 
if you happen to get that model. Uh, this moves very free. And uh, you can go ahead, I think it'd be on this side. You can tighten that down so it uh, takes more, first, more force to turn it, if you wish, if that's something you like. So, uh, but they don't offer it in the newest generation. And I agree, I really don't need it. I like the, the smooth pan with it. But if that's something you want, you might be able to buy it. I talked to guys at Knight, Knight's Armament, and uh, that's what they told me. That We found that it's no longer necessary to include that. So if you do get this second generation, don't be alarmed by the uh, manual. They'll have different product numbers for uh, which generation you have. This product number goes with that first generation. And as you can see, there's your pan adjustment knob there. And it also shows you what the spike feet look like. He did tell me though, they will be selling these separately if you would like it. So uh, I like the rubber feet because it sticks to harder surfaces better. But if you're shooting in PRS off rooftops, you might want the spike uh, version. So he said they will be selling those separately if that's something that you'd like. But uh, that's one way to tell which generation you have. Uh, the first generation, you will have this uh, adjustment knob, the drag adjustment there. And the product numbers will be different. Again, this is your first generation and your second generation PN is right here. So that's one way to tell. But this is just, I would, I would not hesitate to throw this bipod on a 50 cal if I had to. That's how much confidence I have in it already just because of how well built it is. Uh, there is a little bit of rattle, but you kind of want that in a bipod. They hit that perfect sweet spot of looseness mixed with uh, ruggedness and sturdy ruggedness. So if you notice that rattle I was talking about, you might be able to hear it. But once you go ahead and load that bipod, if you're behind a rifle and you load it, it's lock solid. There's no rattle whatsoever. So that's kind of what you want out of one. Uh, I put this on this rifle earlier and was running around with it just to see how loud it would be. Uh, definitely nothing to worry about. Your feet would make more noise running than the bipod would. So that's nothing to worry about there. And with your atlases, uh, they had this nice chrome uh, gear set here, which I didn't like. And Knight's Armament went ahead and made that black, which is good on them. Uh, they know which, which kind of uh, audience or uh, customer they're shooting towards. And uh, just all around a great bipod. One downside is the price, of course. Uh, it's probably one of the more pricier bipods on the market. Uh, I can't compare it. I wish I can had an Atlas here to compare it with you guys, but that's probably one thing you're going to want to do. If you have a buddy that has one or, uh, you have one, try to compare it, try to get information from them and see how they stack up against each other. Cause there's still even a price difference, a pretty big price difference between those two. So it's all about what you want though. This is something I wanted for my precision rifle. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set it up on this rifle just so I can get everything in the camera. But this is not the rifle it'll be on. It'll be on one of my bolt actions. Uh, I'm not sure about the recommended weight for this. But like I said, I would, even at this point, I would not hesitate to throw this on a Barrett 50 cal. And would feel like this would take it no problem without any issues. I think what it's mainly focused at is... Uh, Probably your semi-auto DMRs, PRS uh, style of rifles, bolt actions, uh, maybe something up to a 338, I'm guessing. So don't take this as the company saying it. This is just my opinion. I wouldn't hesitate to throw this on a 50 if you had one and needed a nice bipod for it. So go ahead and check them out. Uh, I will have more videos on this later where I'm really testing this out in the snow with my PR or with my uh, bolt action rifle and 6.5 Creedmoor. So we're going to see how that holds up. Uh, let me get a wait for you guys real quick before I throw this on the carbine or the pistol. This is the box that comes in if that's something that you're wanting to see. Just a real simple box, sleeve, slide that off, boom. Uh, your bipod's inside with this manual here. So let's go ahead and get this weight up for you guys. Let's see if I can get that in the camera there. There we go. So we're on pounds and ounces now. Yeah, 
13.5 probably depending on where it's sitting at yeah pretty even 13 there you go 13.5 very light but yet i don't know how they did it they got a very lightweight bipod very slim but that could that is also very rugged here is one of your more uh more common harris bipods and it's at 15.4 and plus you have you know you only have one direction with a loud spring uh, leg to it still not a bad option harris's are still good to go just depending on your application but i really like the uh this style of bipod highly recommend it uh if you're looking into it you know i would not hesitate to throw this up against an atlas even though i don't have an atlas here to uh, go over the differences with you but uh i would go ahead and choose this one if i was if i was uh out there looking for a nice bipod i'm not sure if this is how they get their measurements for the bipods on their specs but we'll go ahead and do it this way just so you have a good estimation of how big it is uh, what i'm going to do is measure it to the ground to the uh, top of the pick rail that way we get a nice we get a good idea about how much adjustment range we get out of it so we're looking at about seven inches without the bipods extended and extended we're looking at about nine and three eighths nine and a quarter in that range there so that should give you a good idea of uh, what kind of adjustment you get out of these bipods again that's not I'm not sure if that's the standard they use for their specs but this should give you a good estimate okay so this is how you're pretty much going to be looking on your DMR style ARs uh, very slim lined feet move very very easy uh, and this is most likely, picture this on a 16, 20 inch barrel, is how you'll be carrying it. It's very slim, out of the way. You don't have a bunch of springs and stuff that snag on gear. Uh, just an excellent option for this type of rifle. Uh, not this specific one here, but the DMR 16, 20 inch barrel, uh, 6.5 Creed, 6.5 Grendels, uh, even 5.56 five, uh, would be a nice mate for this. <clears throat> so your, here's your cant. I'm gonna try to show it with the camera. That's how many degrees of cant you get. A lot of movement, perfect for being on the side of the hill, especially when you mix that in with uh, your front bipods being able to hit certain in-between angles. So when you're on a hill, it'll, you still have a very stable shot. Uh, now that we went over the, the cant, let's go over the pan feature here. And again, uh, very easy to get this lever out of the way. Locks in like that. I can tighten it. It's not going anywhere or loosen it. And you have your full can adjustment. When I'm done, where I'm happy we're, we're with where it's at, tighten it down and then fold that level lever away. Gets it nice and free out of the way. Again, this butt lever here is your uh, pan adjustment. So I'll flick that off. And, al and allows me degrees of movement left and right. Let me try to get behind the camera more. You could see it has a very high pan adjustment. So you can get a lot of freedom of movement with still having a very stable shot left and right. If you get in a position you need to stay at for a while, you can go ahead and push that lever and keep it locked in, very stable. And this is what I was talking about with loading your bipod. Uh, You'll go ahead and set it down and then push forward and that thing is rock steady. Uh, it's on granite so the feet are slipping a little bit but uh, that's what I was talking about with that feature there. And if you get and if you have a pan shot you're trying to make you could still lock that in as well pushing that tab and it's not going anywhere this thing is very stable. So thanks for watching any questions that I didn't answer I might have missed a few uh, go ahead and ask them. This isn't a review yet but uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw some more gun time on this bipod on different rifles and see how it holds up if I have any complaints. And, uh, but there will be another video in the future. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching, guys.